Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at the four mistakes that beginner note takers make. And I say beginners, but it's actually everyone. I think it starts with beginners. And then as uh, note takers kind of go on, as you keep doing your research, keep doing your notes, it continues because you never recognize it. So I've seen this in everything from students to like research scientists that have multiple PhDs. I've seen the exact same mistakes in them. So let's dig into them after we talk about how you can support the channel. Become a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Uh, members get all my courses, or you can take a, just take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education. Buckle up, let's dive into the four mistakes that note takers make. Mistake number one is that people new to note taking uh, figure that they're, anytime they encounter a problem, that the problem is with the software they have. It's not with their system. They think clearly I'm using Obsidian or it doesn't work for me, so I need to try Tana. Clearly Tana doesn't work for me. You need to try whatever the latest hot one is that you see a whole bunch of people talking about. And they continue to jump between softwares when realistically a good process, a good system for taking notes will live between multiple pieces of software. It can work. I use essentially the same system in Obsidian that I used in Craft. It's very similar. There's not, there are some differences for sure because the tools work different, but ultimately I use tag notes, which I've talked about. I use tags to denote status, right? To read, to summarize. Uh, I have a video on that, so I'll link that up above. Ultimately, there is no perfect PCAM slash Zettelkasten system. There never will be. Once you get past a very low minimum feature bar, one note software is about as good as the next. There's not a huge difference in many of them. The improvements are minimal at the very least. In almost every case, people jump software because they have a bad process and aren't disciplined enough to fix their process. They aren't going to you know, do the next things we're gonna talk about. So they figure that software will be a magic fix for them. This happens also in task management. My task manager isn't working. So they you know, pick whatever other one to do is they switch from to do is to tick tick to OmniFocus to whatever. And almost always the problem is you that your process is bad it has nothing to do with the software. Another big issue with note takers is that they only take notes once. There's a fallacy around note taking that if you take excellent notes, you'll never have to read a resource again. This is entirely a lie. I've read Deep Work by Cal Newport at least three times. I think actually four now that I really think about it. And each time I've got a bit more out of it. I've found ways that it relates to other resources I've read since the last time I read it. Good books always have more in them than you were able to glean the first time. The other time you're gonna to need to read a research resource a second time or a third time is if you have a specific project, you have specific questions in mind. If you have a writing project around a particular subject, you'll look at your notes and find things that you already read that relate, right? When you go back, you'll say, hey, I've read this before, I've read this between, um, and you'll find in your notes that you have things that relate to your research project. Yes, your notes are jumping off point, but now that you have a specific question in mind, you'll have a more focused reading of a resource to do because you have these questions, you need to answer them. This is where your notes help you save so much time. If I was to look up basic income in my notes, I'd have a number of whole books that talked about it. I have a number of times it was referenced in single sections of books. I'd have lots of places that had just a paragraph or a short chapter on it. And I can use my notes to go back and check the source material and make sure that I am understanding the views of the author in light of my focused project to answer the questions I have right now with the writing project I'm going to do. In this case, what I use my whole PKM system and I really think it is is a large index of all the resources you've looked at. It will help you narrow down your search faster and prevent you from reading entire books, looking for a single mention of a topic that you just can't quite place anymore. It's like a huge index of all of your research material. You're going to have to go back and read resources a second time, sometimes a third time to make sure you understand it. Um, really good books to get more out of it. And also to just with when you have specific questions in mind, you will have specific questions you need answered by the text. You will read it in light of that new question. Another big issue that, or big mistake that note takers make is they don't review their notes. Lots of people talk big about it, but most people I coach from students to research scientists to programmers have a poor note review practice. We easily think that if we can merely access information that it's useful to us. Merely being able to access information doesn't make it all useful to us at all. It's like, it's great, it's there. It's just because you get access it doesn't mean it has any use to you. It's having deeper thoughts and connections that makes information useful. It's spending time thinking about the notes we have and finding the gaps in them that makes the whole note taking process useful to us. You should have a regular practice of reviewing your notes to make connections. After two years, I spent a bunch of time reorganizing my notes really just this weekend, a lot of it, to better fit how I'm using it now. This has meant over the course of about a week, I've touched almost every single one of my 4,300 notes. I still have some research or some uh, sorting to do of my writing notes, but ultimately I have pretty much everything I've touched again and read through every note again. To that end, you really need to set aside, say at least an hour a week to review your notes. 
Um, if you're a student and your primary focus is to learn, set aside more time. You should be setting an hour a day to review your notes from the class this week. I talked about that in my video last week about a student vault, which you'll see up above linked. Uh, free student vault, if you missed that, that helps you, get, you know, shows you how I would set it up for students, how I've helped students set up their vaults for school. If you are a researcher, say a scientist, if you are supposed to learn and have new thoughts, then by all means, you should be reviewing your notes regularly because that is your core job function to have new thoughts, make new connections, and then produce research papers. We'll talk about production in a second. One great way to do this is the Smart Random Notes plugin. With this plugin, I can set up searches and then use workspaces to save them. Once you've done this, look for a random note and then make connections. So let's even look at my quick setup. I will do a whole video on this coming up. So you can see here, I've already instituted Smart Random Notes right there. Uh, and I have, this is looking in the path of notes or path of tags or path of books or path of sources. So that corresponds to my folders, right? So that goes into, I'll close these. So it goes into my path of, what was it, books, right? So that's actually under sources, books. So anything in sources, anything in notes, right? Which is my notes, my thoughts on the subject, anything in tags, this is tag notes, right? So it'd be applications sometimes, it will be ableism, right? Will be one, uh, stuff like that. Um, I'm actually going to do a full video once I've done reorganizing my vault on how it's set up and how you can use it. Um, and so when I've done that, what I can actually do is I'll go back to search and then I can hit the random dice right here. And in my main window, it's going to bring up something. It's going to bring up, say, cancel culture. And I can look at that and say, okay, what other things? Linked mentions, unlinked mentions. Well-meaning parents sit on kids, smoothing all problems. And I can say, oh, let's link this and let's link, right? We have more in here. When do we stop supporting someone? Let's link that. This is from other writing I've done. And so then I can come through here and I can say, okay, cancel culture. I don't, maybe I don't have anything to say right now. And I'm not going to do it right now. We'll actually do a live session where I work on making connections. And that's how I'll show you how I use this. I can hit it again. This is joinery, right? So this is a furniture thing. I'm not going to do that right now. Todoist. Specifically look at how some people have done a time blocking course research, right? So reclaim your schedule, time blocking. So I would look at this, right? I continue to go through this, say for an hour or two until I have found more connections. So this is another one, publication, Noise in the City. Title, scientists think peace and quiet should be a human right. So I'd read through this and I'd look for more connections I can make in here. And I do that, say an hour a week to make sure that I am making more connections and I am again doing what I think is the most important thing, which is our last mistake that beginner note takers make. The final and biggest issue that beginner note takers uh, make or they have with their system is that they do not focus on output. I don't know how many times I can like drive this home to people. They do not focus on output. They focus on the input side of note taking. Everyone's like, how do I get my notes in the best? How do I take the best notes on books? They talk about how many notes they add to their system in a week. They look at their huge, pretty graph view. Ultimately, I find the graph view almost entirely useless unless it's just there for pretty. There's very few things I use it for. I occasionally use it to find nodes that have nothing else attached to them because, you know, uh, at one point it was racism. I found that I hadn't really read one resource on racism and nothing else. I'm a white dude. I probably should read more about racism. Um, but they look at it and say, oh, I must be doing good because I have lots of stuff in my graph view. Entirely useless metric. How many notes you added this week? Entirely useless. The number of notes you have in your graph view are entirely useless as a way to judge if your note-taking system is working. In fact, they're simply self-flagellating, like they're just congratulating yourself on doing nothing. You're putting yourself through pain for nothing useful. When you start your note process, you should have some idea of what type of output should come from your notes. For me, it's YouTube videos and writing on my sites for members. In that case, I should only be judging my note system by the output. How many, did I get a YouTube video every week? Did I write my members stuff on uh, Saturdays? Did I get PCAM Weekly out there? If you want to get weekly news on uh, personal knowledge management, curtismichael.ca slash PKM dash weekly. Those are the only metrics that matter in my note system. Am I continuing to produce good thoughts? Am I producing good writing? Am I producing good videos that YouTube is liking? That's the only thing I should be judging it on. Is it helping me find good ideas for writing these things? If it's not doing these things, then my note system is broken in some fashion. Maybe I'm not using my time uh, effectively to work on notes and write. Maybe I fall into collector's fallacy, which is where most of you fall in. They just collect crap and it's not even useful. Whatever the issue is, you need to focus on the output of your note-taking system instead of the input side. So if it's a student, how are you doing on your tests? Are you getting your assignments out? If you're a research scientist, again, 
How are you? Are you producing more papers? If you're a coder, are you learning new languages? Like those are the things you should be focusing on the output of your note taking system, not the input. If you've got other ideas or mistakes people make, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about them. Otherwise, you can support the channel by becoming a member, curtispicale.ca slash membership. Take a course, curtispicale.ca slash education. And if you're already on Skillshare, you'll find links to my courses on Skillshare below. Have an awesome day.